This is your Barbados Today evening update for Thursday, September 16. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Kenneth George this evening delivered a stern warning that Barbados is not in a good place as he reported that the country had recorded four deaths from the coronavirus in the last three days. On the heels of the passing of a 60-year-old man on Tuesday, he disclosed that a 97-year-old woman passed away on Wednesday after spending four days in isolation. She was unvaccinated. Two males died today, a 51-year-old who had comorbidities and a 93-year-old who was in secondary isolation at the Harrison Point Isolation Facility for four days. Their vaccination status is unknown. Dr. George made it clear the situation is troubling. Folks, we are not in a good situation. Our isolation is close to capacity. Our quarantine has many hundreds of primary contacts. We need to, to start to do the right thing. And therefore, I urge you that many of these deaths are what we would term in public health unwanted deaths. And I urge you to do a few things. There is too much mixing of people. I see it on my, by myself, bars, restaurants, and rum shops. The fellas have one or two drinks, and after that, the mask comes off. Persons are letting their guard down in families. Dr. George added that it's particularly frightening that the deadly virus is affecting all age groups. He expressed concern that children are now making up 15 to 20 percent of all COVID-19 cases. He urged Barbadians to take action now. The frightening thing about COVID is that it is affecting all age groups. We have indicated to the public that based on our records, we have identified that children are making up 15 to 20 percent of COVID cases. This is frightening. In addition to that, we are currently checking the vaccination status of these three individuals and will certainly report them to you when we have that information. The Best Dos Santos Public Health Laboratory confirmed 71 new cases from the 2,132 tests conducted on Wednesday. The new cases comprise 33 free males and 38 males. 21 are under the age of 18, while 50 are 18 and over. The number of people in isolation is 828. Barbados has recorded 6,248 confirmed cases of the virus since March 2020. A total of 123,255 first doses have been administered under the National Vaccination Program from COVID-19. To date, 96,715 persons, or 35.7% of the population, have received their second dose and are fully vaccinated. Meanwhile, head of the COVID-19 monitoring unit, Ronald Chapman, says Barbadians are increasingly adhering to the protocols and he believes this change is being driven by the recent spike in infections. I think that my officers are starting to say probably because of the, the increase in cases. Now, um, we're starting to see a little bit of, a little bit more respect being shown to the disease by by a lot of the pub, by the public, but as you know, that tends to to to, to rise and fall with the cases. But right now, I think people are starting to get to the get to the realization that this is no joke; it is serious, and and that um, you can lose your life or maybe become seriously ill. In other news this Thursday, Prime Minister Mayim Motley has underscored the importance of empowering young people to become global citizens. Motley stressed this point today as she delivered an address at the opening of the three-day UNCTAD Youth Forum. The forum focuses on innovation, inclusion and youth empowerment for developmental transformation. The Prime Minister encouraged the youth not to become dismayed and suggested that their resilience for hope and passion would help the world to rise beyond this point. I believe that that has to be the goal of all of today's leaders, to nurture a generation rooted in the culture and values of their nation, 
yet confidently global in their thinking and their outlook. That is my fervent aspiration, my friends, for all of our young people. Our world needs it now more than ever. That commitment to the global realities that must reflect the best of who we are, the humanizing influence that will cause us not to have the kind of schisms and separations that have literally caused too many people either to die or to be literally sealed in to deprivation and poverty and lack of opportunity. We want a different world and we want a world where that consciousness and where principles matter. There's regional and international news after this short break. Happenings, the Antigua and Barbuda government has given a September 20 deadline for all unvaccinated public servant workers to show proof of having been vaccinated against the coronavirus. A policy document released on Wednesday night also outlined similar measures for persons operating public transport, the trade union movement, private sector employees, as well as all passengers traveling into the country. Prime Minister Gaston Brown explains. Yesterday, the cabinet took a most magnanimous position to act in the best interests of the people of Antigua and Barbuda, to put the public good ahead of political self-preservation, and at the same time to act courageously, to act with strength and resilience. I've said to my colleagues that we must be courageous enough to make the decisions that are in the best interests of the people, which we did yesterday. But obviously, there are some who will challenge the mandates, and we must be strong enough to stand by those mandates and at the same time be resilient in order to recover from any missteps. On the international front, Facebook has taken a more aggressive approach to shut down coordinated groups of real-time users engaging in harmful activities on its platform, using the same strategy its security teams take against campaigns using fake accounts. More of this report from Reuters TV. The company told Reuters the new approach uses tactics usually taken by Facebook's security teams for wholesale shutdowns of networks engaged in influence operations that use false accounts to manipulate public data, such as Russian troll farms. It could have major implications for how the social media giant handles political and other coordinated movements breaking its rules at a time when Facebook's approach to abuse on its platforms is under heavy scrutiny from global lawmakers and citizen groups. The approach will target real accounts that systemically break its rules through mass reporting, where many users falsely report a target's content or account to get it shut down, or brigading, a type of online harassment where users might coordinate to target an individual through mass posts or comments. The expansion means Facebook security teams could take more sweeping actions than the company removing posts or individual accounts as it otherwise might. That's news, but for the very latest, you can visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD, 99.3 FM. <laughs> 